Hello and welcome to Backstage, where we bring you all the latest from the world of TV and film. And this week, it is a special from the BFI Film Festival. I'm Katie Spencer, Sky's Entertainment Correspondent, and I'm joined by Sky's Entertainment Editor, Claire Gregory. Oh, it's been a, a point of recording this, a week and a half's worth of A busy old activities. time. Yeah. The London Film Festival, keeping uh, kind of film fans and critics and everyone very busy. Us on an actual red carpet. I mean, this is where the action's been happening. We should say it's been a bit of a different feel this year, hasn't it? Because of the writers and the actors' strike, so a lot less celebrities. But yeah. has that mattered? Well, definitely less celebrities, but some very starry names nonetheless in terms of directors. There's still some really big kind of names around and some big, big moments really happening on these carpets. Including, uh, if we're talking about big names, the man that I spoke to this week, the one and only legendary filmmaker that is Martin Scorsese, who is here at the London Film Festival to pro promote his new film, uh, a film that is 206 minutes long, uh, but it is uh, uh, an absolute triumph of his. It's Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh, Sage. They have the worst land possible. But they outsmarted everybody. The land had oil on it. Black gold. Money flows freely here now. I do love that money, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Claire, you were fortunate enough to have quite a, a, a long Q&A session with Marty, weren't you? Utterly fascinating. It was a retrospective and he sat with Edgar Wright, another director, and kind of talked about certain films through his life and certain moments. And it just really brings home that, I mean, he probably is kind of the biggest, the best director in the world, really. And he's still working. I'm utterly fascinated by how people just never, they just keep going. And we all kind of wince slightly when we say the, the duration, but we should stress that actually there's not a minute of this where he kind of wastes what is going on on the screen. It's, it's brilliant. This yeah, bit. it is really, really good. People are saying his best in decades. I personally really enjoyed it. One of my favourites of his. And uh, yeah, brilliant performances, bringing together two of his like muses, if you like, Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Robert De Niro. He's worked with both several times times and now together in this movie just absolutely incredible but um watch out for lily gladstone she's the one to watch a really really heartbreaking devastating performance from yeah her. people are always already saying that um possible oscar nominations you never know we will see i was fortunate enough to um catch up with the man himself at the red carpet for this we, it was a very limited amount of time i got to talk to him for but i did manage to get two quick questions with him uh started the interview though by asking him about um the fact that he uh, his age is it important for him to um, be sort of pushing himself and trying new things because this is a, a western of sorts so it's a bit different for him oh no no I always I, I mean the point is it's so hard look at what you're doing it's very hard work you have to really want to do it I think uh, and so uh, to be um, uh, on a movie set or in a location uh, to be dealing with all the issues that well that are involved in production I think it's something that you have to really feel strongly about and that you want to say, that you're sort of burning to say. And so that, that keeps you going. If you get the actors with you and a DP and the rest of your crew that's on a mission with you, that's good. And so I've been lucky. That's spoken a lot about the future of cinema. What are your hopes and fears? Well, my, my, hope, my hopes are such that um, uh, with the new technology and the new generations and younger people seeing the world in a different way, uh, that cinema will evolve itself into a new form. And that's up to the younger people. And Killers of the Flower Moon is out in cinemas on the 18th of October. Shall we cram in a bit of chat about some TV, though? Yes, I mean, it's not just <laughs> the not London just film. film Festival. There's also all sorts of other stuff going on. You've got VR, you've got um, other bits, but TV as well. And a big new series, which is coming to Amazon Prime Video next year. Um, but we don't know too much about it other than that, really, because there's no trailers or anything yet. No, well, this is the thing. It's Expats, which is starring Nicole Kidman, uh, but we have no trailer that we can show you. But we do have an interview that we did with the director, Lulu Wang. Um, to set the scene, of course, it's uh, all about a community of expats that are living in Hong Kong. From the very sort of inception of this um, being turned into a TV show, though, it's 
been a little bit controversial, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's caused a bit of controversy, um, some to do with kind of filming. It was being made sort of just around the pandemic and yeah. there was kind of people flying in and out and that caused a little bit of controversy there. And now some people or critics are sort of saying, you know, why is this series about wealthy expats rather yeah. than people actually from Hong Kong? And Lulu Wang has um, in some way tried to address that by sort of broadening the scope of what this um, book was originally about to include things like the, the Filipino nannies who also obviously have, would have come over to Hong Kong to um, uh, get work there and experience life there. Look, we were lucky enough to get some time with Lulu Wang herself, who is the creator and director of this, and she uh, told us what it was like to work with the one and only Nicole Kidman, who not only acts in this, but also was the, the producer. She really navigates both of those roles at different um, moments of the production. So in development, um, I really saw her working as uh, an executive producer because she wanted to make sure that the scripts were in my voice and um, was always very supportive of that and ma making sure that ultimately what we ended up filming was the vision that I had in mind. Um, but then in production, she focused much more on being an actor and letting go of control and not holding on to the executive producer role because, you know, to produce, you really do need to um, use your power and control um, to wield. Uh, the ship, right, in the in the direction that you want it to go in. But as an actor, you have to relinquish that power. You have to be vulnerable. You have to trust in your director. And that's something that was important to her. And she was like, look, once I'm on set, I'm yours. I'm your instrument, and I am just an actor. And, um, and what's important is that you have the vision and you use me in the way that you feel I should be utilized. And Expats premieres on Prime Video on the 26th of January. Look, we are here at the BFI Film Festival, so let's get back to talking about some films. Um, and one that has already created quite a lot of awards buzz. It's called May December. When they sent me the script, I thought, here is a woman with a lot more to her than I remember from the tabloids. What would make a 36-year-old woman have an affair with a seventh grader? People, they like see me as a victim. I wanted it. Look, why, Claire, are people getting so excited about this one? Well, I think largely because of the performances. You've got Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore, um, and it's kind of a bit meta. So obviously, uh, Natalie Portman is an actress, and she plays an actress ooh. Ooh, who's trying to go quite method um, in order to play this woman played by Julianne Moore. So she goes to spend time um, with this woman. The reason being because Julianne Moore's character was the sort of uh, subject of a tabloid romance. Uh, she actually went to prison for dating a 13-year-old boy who is now her husband. It is essentially though a character study, which is which is great, isn't it? There's no sort of whizzy special effects or anything. It's just some brilliant acting. A lot of people very excited about the actor that plays Joe in this. As That's well. right. Yeah, the husband uh, played by Riverdale alumni Charles Melton. And imagine you're in a film with you know Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman, and it's your performance that everyone's talking about. Right. Uh, it doesn't get better than that, does it? So we caught up with Todd Haynes to ask him about casting Charles Melton. Charles showed this, this this fragility, this, this somebody who was so preformed, you know, so stifled, um, who was sort of learning how to take his very first steps out of the situation, almost learning how to speak. And that, that was just a remarkable thing with such restraint and such a, such uh, a minute uh, kind of performance, which, you know, I think it takes actors their entire careers to develop that kind of confidence that that can be so understated and be as powerful as it is. So he brought this, these instincts to it with very little, you know, with not a long track record as an actor and had never been in a dramatic film before. 
And May, December is out in UK cinemas on the 17th of November. Look, that's it from us for this week at the BFI Film Festival. We think we probably need to go and have a lie down, do we? It's been jam-packed We need films. to get off this red carpet before some stars <sighs> arrive. This is true. But look, before you do that, if you've liked what you've uh, seen today and you want to find out a bit more, don't forget to scan the QR code, which is on your screens at the moment, or just search for Backstage, however it is that you normally find your podcasts. And we will uh, keep you updated with all that's happening in the world of TV and film. But for us for now, that's it for this week and we'll see you very soon. Bye.